me a glass of water. Thanks. So, what's your superpower? We were all kids once. What was your superpower? Let's hear it. Invisibility? Invisibility? Creep. <laughs> I, won't, I won't make fun of anyone else. Don't worry. I just, I know Matt, so. What was yours, Lilia? Super strength? Yep, smells not everything, right? Yeah, you'll get it later. Uh, Gabrielle, is your hand up? Did you have a, no, you didn't? Okay. Come on, guys. We were all kids once. Yep. To fly, that was, who, who is a fly? Yeah, yeah. Yours, sir? Your, sorry, what's that? Short and skinny? <laughs> That's uh, not my superpower, sadly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, um, I, I was a flight guy. I would dream about that. You know, when you wake up and you're like, oh, no, I was flying. You try to go back to bed and dream more about it, and it never works out the way you want it to. That was mine when I was a kid, but as I grew up, I decided to have something a little more realistic as my, uh, as my goal, as my superpower. And that was, as I read scripture, as I looked at God's word, you look at like, stories like David and Goliath, you look at um, like, people that despite the odds were able to overcome through having faith in God. And like Peter, James, and John in, in the boat, and... Like just all these stories in the Bible about people with strong faith. And I aspired to that. So when I was about 13, 14 years old, I remember uh, when I was a camper at Camp Kadish. That's where I grew up going to camp. Uh, I remember it raining all week, and it stunk. Camp and rain all week. It just muddy and grody. And I felt overcome. I felt like my faith tank was full. And I looked up the sky, and I said, rain, stop. But the rain did not stop. <laughs> my poor heart broke. <laughs> Poor little guy, just kept raining. But uh, let's ponder that thought. If you follow Jesus, do you get superpowers? Is something, uh, something different going to happen? Uh, well, let's see what God's Word has to say about it. That's what we do in this church. That's what we do at our camp. We look at God's Word. So we're going to start in an odd place, but don't worry, we'll bring it all around. Luke 9.23 is the text we'll be in today. So I've preached a sermon a few times, and for some reason I feel like I've preached this exact one from this pulpit, but I don't think I have. Have I? Okay, Steve hasn't heard it. Good. Whew. Okay, now I feel better. I could uh, change on a dime if I had to. Uh, <laughs> Luke 9, 23. And, uh, and it says, so this is Jesus speaking, and he said to them all, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. There, that's it. That's our text. If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. So them all is Jesus' disciples. That's who he's talking to, the guys that he challenged to follow him. And there was um, 12 disciples, and there was a group of 72, and then there was the multitudes that followed him as well. And that was a challenge to anyone that would aspire to follow Jesus. If you're going to follow me, you want to be like me, this is what you got to do. So this is why following Jesus was a big deal. He was literally showing his disciples how he wanted them to live. So just a little, uh, a little history lesson for you. Um, when, when you read the Isaiah, Jeremiah, the other prophets, Malachi, the other prophets that pointed to the Savior that the Hebrew people, that the Israelites wanted, that they looked to, um, the, the, the reading that they often had, the interpretation that they often had was a political Savior, a king with, who would rule over a brick-and-mortar government, who would reestablish um, the authority, the rightful authority that the Israelite people had. And uh, it was kind of like socks for Christmas for some of the Israelites when Jesus came along because they, they, they got something that was very practical and way better than they could have wanted, but they didn't get what they wanted in that moment. Jesus didn't come to establish his own kingdom. In fact, sometimes when Jesus would perform miracles, the crowd would try to crown, take him and crown him by force, and he would slip away through the crowds, and they wouldn't allow that to happen because the kingdom he came to establish was one that would rule over hearts and minds and not just a physical government, but an eternal government. Hearts and minds, part of God's kingdom here on earth. That's why following Jesus was a big deal. He wasn't just showing a way to live politically. He was showing a way to live, to know God. When, the, when he said to the disciples, following me, he was telling them, live as I live. 
So if anyone wants to follow me, here's his conditions. Let him deny himself. So denying yourself happens in my house every once in a while. I will confess, we did get Nutana Bakery donuts yesterday. And they were delicious. And uh, every time that white box is in our house, or boxes are, are in our house, I, I tell my kids, now make sure that you save one for mom. Because we will just keep eating and eating those delicious donuts. And it has happened more than once where Jessica gets up from after a night shift. She gets up later in the day. That's where she is right now, sleeping. And <laughs> she'll come down and open a box and... There is no donuts, <laughs> or there's the one that she didn't, that she doesn't like. Someone ate the one that I, we got for her, and uh, who ate my donut? It is amazing how a phantom can just slip into your house and consume donuts because nobody is guilty. We're all very good at denying ourselves in that moment, but that's not the kind of self-denial that Jesus is talking about. What he's talking about is uh, denying ourselves. Is w- when you deny yourself in the way that Jesus asks us, asks his disciples to deny himself you are putting something else first. So you're, you're, a higher value that you hold takes precedence over what you want, over what you desire. So like, let's say that if you chose a value, um, just practically, practically, if you're like, I want to save money, money's tight, you might choose to deny yourself that Tim Hortons coffee every morning. Right? This is not a moral issue. This is just a money-saving issue. That might be a, a hot tip for you. You want that coffee every morning, or the Starbucks coffee, or the McDonald's extra value meal. Oh, baby. That's a thing of self-denial for me. I know, guilty pleasures, right? But uh, when you deny yourself, you have chosen a higher value. Um, Another way you can think about it is uh, I I got migraines a lot as a kid, and I missed exams. And so in my grade 12 year, I missed my English exam. And as I sat in the rewrite room next to my English class the next day, I, I was writing it, and I was, my teacher put me in the textbook room. And I'm about 15 minutes in, and I pause to think. I look up and stare into the distance, and right in my line of sight is the textbook for the class that I'm writing the exam for. <sighs> and right away, I'm like, that would be useful in this moment. And if the teacher's stupid enough to put me in this room, <laughs> like, come on. I was so tempted to pick up that textbook, crack it open, and check my work. But I got convicted immediately, and so um, the teacher came in a couple minutes later, and I said, "Uh, can you remove that textbook, please? She's like, oh, I didn't even think of that. Sorry, Greg. And then she took it out of the room, and I finished the exam. Sometimes denying yourself is that, right? And certainly in our, our struggle with sin, the reason why we have commands, why Jesus asks us to do things, why the Bible has so many rules is because they don't come naturally to us. If it came naturally, we wouldn't need to know the law but it doesn't come naturally to us. Uh, Jeremiah 9 talks about the heart being deceitful above all things. And so self-denial will be a part of following Jesus because it does not come naturally. When we deny ourselves, that means we're going to not follow our cravings first. We follow what Jesus wants first, what he's told us in his words. So things like when someone cuts you off in traffic and you want to give them a wave, not using all fingers, <laughs> right? You, you, you think of um, uh, what James says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, right? Let all that you do be done in love in 2 Corinthians. You think of that, and you deny yourself. <laughs> Not going to do that, right? Instead of giving a short answer to your children because you're grumpy, You're going to remember that fathers do not provoke your children, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. We need those verses because denying ourselves doesn't come naturally. I talk about this with campers at camp all the time. They get in trouble and they blame everybody else for it. (laughs) No, 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 you don't understand. Even that story I told you about, it was my ADHD. You know, you deny yourself. I failed. I want to live like Jesus. Uh, Jesus didn't just tell us to deny himself. And this is important to remember. He did it himself as well. So Matthew 26, Matthew 26. We are going to go a little over time. I don't want to skip over this good stuff. I can button it up a little bit. We'll go a little over time today. Matthew 26, 36. Jesus came with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he told them, 
sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking along Peter and two sons of Zebedee, that would be James and John, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. He said, I'm deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here. Stay awake with me. And going a little further, he fell face down and prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He asked Peter, you couldn't stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray so you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time he went away and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came back again, found him sleeping. (laughs) They couldn't keep their eyes open. There's a good juxtaposition of a group of people that couldn't deny themselves and then a man who did deny himself. Uh, Jesus would have preferred not to have to die for the sins of the world, it would appear. That's what he laid before his father. But he put his father's will ahead of his own desires. And that's what denying yourself looks like. Let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily. So the image of the cross, you see a lot in our culture. Yep, we got a cross here. Every, almost every church has a cross in it somewhere. And it's become so ubiquitous in our society that people wear crosses as jewelry. But at this time, uh, the cross had one meaning. Uh, this is before Jesus died that he, he said these things. And I, I wonder if the disciples were like, oh, there he goes again. Yeah, we, no one understands you, Jesus. Why are you, why are you making things harder for people by using language like this? But the cross had one, it was a symbol of one thing. It wasn't a symbol of a church or Christianity. It's one thing that it meant was capital punishment, execution. So if you, maybe for your ears, it would sound better if you heard it this way. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his lethal injection daily, or let him take up his electric chair daily, or his, imagine you had guillotine ears, ear, earrings, sorry, earring, like guillotine jewelry. It does exist, actually. You can go on Etsy and buy it. I've, someone showed me after, after I spoke in their church. Um, but that's what Jesus is saying, to take up your capital punishment. What, what does he mean by that? Well, Jesus knew what kind of death he was going to suffer when he said these words. That was not a mystery to him. No one else did. But it was still meaningful for the crowds and his disciples. Jesus says that when we follow him, if we're going to follow him, there's going to be some suffering. There's going to be some difficulty. It's going to be some pain. You look at Jesus' life, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Matthew 8.20 says, Foxes have dens, the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He was functionally homeless for some of his life. He traveled around a lot. His life was not easy. Somewhere along the way, we have believed that when we follow Jesus, things get easier. Um, I would argue that they get much better. But life is fraught with challenge. And following Jesus does not mean that things are going to be easy. Moreover, uh, there's the things that happen to us in life, just the hard things that happen. Moreover, when you follow Jesus, you're going to also endure some of the Difficulties that he endured because of what he taught. Let's not forget that he died on the cross because of what he taught. And when we align ourselves with Jesus, when we align ourselves with God's word, we will endure persecution because these ideas aren't very popular in our society. The things we're talking about here aren't very popular. And uh, sometimes when people hear these words, they get very defensive. People think we're crazy for following what, and what we say is just from an outdated, musty old book of writings, but we, we follow it because we follow Jesus. Taking up our cross also means that we work hard and persevere through challenges. When you follow Jesus, you still have the stresses of home life. You do. You'll deal with loss. Your mental game will be weak at times. The difference is that now Jesus walks through that suffering with you. And this is why, and we talked about this in church uh, a few months ago, that uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. These aren't just mistakes that Jesus threw out there. He wants to walk through us with these things. And let's not forget Matthew 28, 20. You're in Matthew 26. You can turn two pages over. That teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. This is Jesus talking again. And remember, I am with you always 
to the end of the age. Jesus promised to walk with us through those cross-bearing times, those hard times. So if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. So again, let's circle back. Following Jesus means we aim to live as Jesus did. Oh man, I forgot one thing. Annika, can you reach into my jacket and bring me a glove out of my jacket pocket? Um, we deny ourselves as Jesus did. We carry our cross as he did and we follow him. We do the things that Jesus does. In fact, we join in on the work that God is doing today. So when we read the Gospels, when we see what Jesus was up to, he did things like healing the blind, right? He did things like feed the poor. He did things like teach and preach. He fellowshiped with the disenfranchised. And he found the people that were self-righteous, and he preached very, <laughs> he said very hard things to them. Um, and Jesus obeyed. But, uh, and then Jesus left. Did, did God's work stop when Jesus left the earth? Well, let's look to God's word one more time. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. And there's also Jesus speaking. And it says, Truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and he will do even greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Strong words. Strong words. Do we believe that? That God will do greater things in us than Jesus ever did. So that was a huge trend in the 90s was WWJD, what would Jesus do? And it's not a bad question to ask, um, but like that's not where we need to stop. That's not what we need to rest in. Because this is not a WWJD verse. This is a what would Jesus do if he was in your situation? It is what is Jesus doing on earth? How is his work Continuing, because God wants to do, what, what do we read? He will do even greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. Jesus left, and he sent another counselor to establish his church and to continue his ministry through church. If it was better for Jesus to stay, he would have stayed. But he left. So the way I think about it, and this is not my illustration, is um, we are made in the image of God, so... Um, here's something made in the image of something else, right? A glove looks a lot like a hand. Right, so here we go. Here we go, glove. Go shake Tony's hand. Right? The image doesn't really have much use on its own. But when the Holy Spirit, when God indwells us, that is when the glove can act. And the glove the glove submits the hand's actions, and that's when the glove becomes useful. Without me, you can do nothing. Folks, I, I don't know how we got so mixed up <laughs> in our churches, thinking that we can just waltz around without the indwelling of the Spirit and not do what God, not join in in the work that God is doing. He has saved you absolutely. When you, when you put your faith in Jesus, he has saved you, and you have hope. But he does not just want to stop there. He wants to do greater works in and through you. The stories I told you, folks, that wasn't just for my sake. Um, I tell you those things because I, I'm not special. <laughs> You're able to reach out to the community around you and join in in the work God is doing. And we do praise and prayer every week, and people testify to how they see God work, not just in their lives, but the lives of people around them. I wonder if we can submit to God a little better. If we can start praying, God, show me how you're working around me. Fill me, indwell me, and help me to join in in your work. Folks, God doesn't need you and I to do his work, but he has chosen in these days to minister through his church, through people like you and me. No matter where, if I just had a little more faith, if I only knew a little bit more about the Bible, those are good things to aspire to. But you are useful to God, he can use a willing person today. Every summer, I have people, cabin leaders, 
And directors come to me and say, Greg, I can't do it. My job is too hard. I'm totally out of my depth. Um, I don't think I should be doing this job. <laughs> and I'll say to them, do you think I don't feel the same way some days? I feel that way a lot of days. But it's not about our capability. It's about God's strength and his power. The funny thing about this is uh, if you want to screw in a, a bolt on the bottom of a car where you can't see it, um, you probably want to do it barehanded so you have more, so you're more tactile. You don't want to wear a glove. So we're probably not really helping God do his, do his work better. We're probably getting in the way of a bunch. But that's still how he wants to work because he loves us. He loves his children and he wants to be used. He wants us to be used in his work. God's plan for us is bigger than just coming to Sunday service. It is, though that's important. God's plan for us is bigger than just praying for a meal before we eat it, though that's a good thing. God's plan for us is to be his son, to do greater things through his indwelling here on earth. That is the superpower. Greater things you will do. It's important to follow Jesus, folks, to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily, and to follow him. Let's not miss the opportunities. Let's move beyond WWJD. Let's move to the place where we are committing in faith, God, I want to join in in my own broken way. Show me how I can serve and join your work here today. Let's pray. Thanks, Lord God, for your word. And please, Lord, help us to look outside ourselves and our context and just to lift our eyes up to you God, we know that you're working in and around us. Please, Lord, help us not to just stop our faith with just consumption, but help us to be part of the work that you're doing in our province, in our city, in our families. And God, would you change us from the inside out, not, not for our sake, but to give glory to you, Father. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.